Chicho, a.k.a. Mr. Boom Shock Locker. And now, Rick Sands and Search and Destroy from Super Design Land, Boom Shaka Locker. So we're back. Yep. And that's it. We're out. See you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. We, um, yeah, we had uh, what would have been last week then. Cleveland Bazaar. Yeah, we had the Cleveland Bazaar was last week. This is a time jump. So Time travel. Yeah. So, yeah, last week we had Cleveland Bazaar. Um, it's one of the outdoor events. Um, actually, a lot of people came because it was a holiday weekend. Um, air show. Air show, yeah. Whew. So we have the Blue Angels and all that, you know, flying around town, big fighter pilots, stuff like that. And, you know, good, good, good crowd all weekend because you have a lot of people in town for various reasons. So um, it's always a good event or has been at least already at that spot. Um, so that's why we like, we encourage people like you have places in your towns that you can, you know, push your art. You just got to find them and then. Sometimes it takes you to test it out, you know, like sometimes it's a big fail or it's, you know, it just does, it's not as good as some something else. And now, you know, but you know, that's how you line up, you know, multiple events every month or at least something that's consistent every year that, you know, like, Hey, this is a good one we did last year. Um, then you, you know, it also gets you locals. Cause a lot of times, you know, locals don't know about things going on until they're there. Until it uh, affects them or they have some, you know, extra vested interest in going because of a significant other or like romantic interest or something um, or like a buddy's doing it and they just have nothing to do or, or they're like, oh, someone needs my help, like lo- loading stuff in or something. Yeah. Um, and then that's one of those things too. This particular one, is across the street from Westside Market here in Cleveland, which for people who aren't from Cleveland, it's like a traditional like butcher deli kind of uh, marketplace. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain had said that it's like the only place like it left. Anyway, you have that going on and people from Cleveland will always take people not from Cleveland there. And it's close to downtown, so if people are going to Rock Hall, Science Center, stadiums, theater and all that, you know, it's it's within walking distance, even though I'm probably not walking all the way from downtown to it. Yeah. Anyway, they uh, it's the first event that I feel like we've done in Cleveland that has like that many tourists. And this was the third time we did it this summer. They have it every other weekend. And um, I think that was the thing that caught me off guard was I wasn't expecting so many people from like, you know, Nashville, Kentucky, Chicago, yeah, yeah. Florida. Yeah. That were, I guess we haven't had a show in Cleveland that there was that many people needing to figure out if our art would travel safe in a suitcase. And then with it being uh, all these people that were locals, it's an area that's like highly trafficked by people on bikes. So it is a situation where we had a absolutely had to have bags for certain people. So then we're running to the cars and having to, you know, look for that extra plastic bag for emergencies or got stuffed under the seat. Yeah, which is an interesting problem to have, because usually when you run out of bags, people are like, "Oh, it's okay, my car is over there." But this is one of those exceptions. Yeah, it's usually at outdoor events. You people will carry it, so it also helps in the marketing aspect of other people. Like, hey, where'd you get that thing? Um, but yeah, that was that was a surprise. At least we know for that spot. But usually with like the cons. People bring their own bags, they have backpacks and such. So usually like when they're picking up stuff, they can just put things in that way. But the, the records, you know, are more fragile. So you can't just throw it in a backpack. And, you know, it's it's probably broken, you know, by the time you get home. So or scratched or by whatever else is in there. Yeah, yeah. Your gun or hatchet that's just sitting in your book bag. 
So I'm just kidding. You know that that's always a it's it's, it's a good event. Um. Well, besides the traffic's fun. Old so. guys, real guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get your uh, your fun uh, your fun uh, attendees. Let's say. <laughs> so you're gonna say your fun your fun nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this instance, there was a man, and I, I, you know, some time has passed since we're going over this, and we had another event, and I told so many people yesterday about this guy, but so uh. There's people out there that seem to, um, even though we've been painting on records for 15, 16 years, painted over 60,000 of them, that it's their first time coming across us and they just flip out. And then in this particular instance, you had an older guy, probably like 60s, um, browsing about this thing. And uh, he goes and looks at our anime bin and uh you know pulls something out and we got three guys younger dudes just looking at stuff while in there and the guy goes you ruined a perfect or you ruined a good polka record and i look at him and i didn't have anything witty to really come back i just was like i don't care (laughs) <laughs> and this is one of those events too we need to be there at like seven in the morning to get like good parking and because it's one of those things you're just stuck parking on the street and if you don't find parking on the street even paid parking is kind of far away and we want to be able to like walk or dolly the stuff to our cars you know the last you're, you're there to make money when it comes down to it, you know, okay, you make your art for your expression and all that, but you're doing an event like that to sell it to people, to make connections with other creative people, to open up creative opportunities with people wandering around that can facilitate them, but you're not paying. And that's the thing you're paying to be there. You're paying for your spot as well as all these other people. You're not paying to be harassed by someone that for whatever reason, people in the world now think you're, they're entitled to tell you their opinion. And, you know, it, I, I don't know if it's like the online's bleeding into the real world and people aren't used to either being called out in person. But, you know, this dude might have been having a bad day, but I definitely was not giving him any more time you know there's it's another thing too for people that wind up in these positions there's a lot of times there's a lot of times where someone might misunderstand your art or be triggered by it and in explaining where you're coming from and what your inspirations are you know not only do you win them over but you get a sale out of it right this guy was clear was it just wasn't going to happen so there's no point in even having the conversation any further yeah yeah he was there just to be angry at something he probably went from booth to booth doing it but you know with us it was you know the wrong booth you know you told him you know (laughs) you don't care (laughs) and then i just kept staring at us and i said all right have a nice day man and then the the guys who were shopping our booth uh noticed that the back of his shirt said old guys rule and they started they all started yelling old guys rule at him as he walked away so that was awesome you have not only random people see the the uh i mean they say it's like audacious or whatever is kind of like an overstatement but i feel like after dealing with it for so many years um but i mean it it's I'm just glad people saw it. And then they actually like said something too, which, and then, you know, then they bought some of our art, which was even, even more icing on the cake. Right. I was just happy someone else saw it. Cause these things always seem to happen. I'd say 90% of the time it's when it's like during a lull and you have some person yelling at you over nothing. Well, you know, there's always one at every event, oh, yeah. at least one. But you know, he was he 
he, he was the winner for the summer already. Um, you know, but you know, it didn't stop the people from picking up things and the guys all got a good laugh out of it that were in there. So they have a story to tell people too. And you know, it's all good. You know, it's not going to stop us from doing what we do. Oh, yeah. Know, that's, that's the one thing like we, that's cool, but like, that's your opinion and take it somewhere else. Oh yeah. <laughs> it didn't ruin our day. Yeah. I'm just more amazed at one that it happened and two that the GoPro died like 10 minutes before it happened. Yeah, that would have been clutch to catch. Been trying to get time lapses of the different events. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's cool to get those and we can stitch them together and, you know, it's that'll be fun. But, yeah, when, when we can't catch those things, you know, it's a good story. But to have the, the visual aspect of, like, no, this is what happened. Or at least a still. Yeah. Because the, the guy looked like he was squaring up with me and where I'm like, I mean, if you're going to fight me, I'll just let you hit me and I can take your retirement. I mean, I'm not really trying to get an assault charge over uh, someone having a bad day and trying to make my day worse. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, he was was definitely going, he was there to goat somebody, but whatever, not us. That's one of those things, too, to people that you're just going to find people that uh, you rub the wrong way. I was going to say rub you the wrong way, but th- that always happens if you know how to uh, just not worry about it. Yeah. But you're always going to, you're not always, but you're at some point from time to time, you're going to find people who are rubbed the wrong way. And, you know, your best move is to try to just navigate the situation to just, get past it as quick as possible and not really fret over you being disrespected and dragging the conversation out like you know more than it needs to be as much as everyone you know has like the daydreams in their head where they beat up all the bad people in the world yeah you know it just doesn't work like that yeah i mean and you know with with the scene you know doing art it's all you know subjective and objective anyway so like you kind of just find the positive aspect of it you know thank people for taking the two minutes to look at it even if it's a quick walk by oh yeah you know that's that's the one thing that whole you know kindness thing hey hey man thanks for you know stopping in sometimes the people will come back especially like that's the one thing you have to learn if it's early in an event people usually make their their rounds they're gonna go there see everything you know, some people go in and just buy stuff and that's just what they do. But like a lot of people will be like, oh, hey, we're going to take a look around. We'll be back. And usually, at least with what we do, the people come back. Like it's, you know, once you see everything else, ours definitely sticks out from a lot of stuff. Like you have like four T-shirt vendors, you know, and they're kind of similar designs. You know, if you're getting a T-shirt from one, you're probably not going to each of them getting something similar, you know. So like ours is always something different. You know, that usually people will make their, their rounds back. But, like, we do limited. Some certain things are limited. So, if you see them, we tell you, like, you should probably grab that now. There's only one. There's only or one. Or, two or that's something. the popular thing. We've been selling out the past couple weekends. You know, and usually, you know, people will listen and just get it because it will be gone. Like, we've had people come back an hour later, like, oh, hey, man, I set those three that I wanted in the back of the of the bin. And you're like, yeah, but people look at all of them. Like, they're eventually going to get to those three. You know, like, it's one of those things, unless somebody's trying to drop, you know, like, multiple, multiple pieces, will we really hold on to it, you know? But, like, usually I'll do that for people that, like, have bought from us before. And, like, oh, hey, I already got 12 of these at my house. We want to furnish another room with them. You know, then, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll make our allowances. But, like, usually it's just a free-for-all kind of. If you're there, first person to grab it, grab it. And we've, we've seen people, like, oh, man, I wanted that one on the wall. It's like, well, you should have asked, you know, because I just, you know, that person said, hey, can you get that off the wall? And I'll just grab it. And the first yeah. person to say it, I'm giving it to them. Can't like magically materialize another piece. Yeah. Like, you know, if you want to pay, like, unless it's like, hey, if you want to pay me $30 for that, <laughs> you know, yeah. whatever. But like, like, it's you know, first come, first serve. And, you know, it's uh, with us. That's why we make so many of them. Like, OK, well. There's not okay. Well, they picked up the one that's in purple, but there's like six other variations there of the same design. 
you know, there's if, you, if you were really shooting for purple, then, you know, unfortunately that one's gone, but we have other ones you can grab or something that can match, you know, if you're trying to match the record to something else they have, well, we'll probably find something that's complimentary to it at least. You have these people that just want what they can't have. And so we dealt with this for people that know, don't know. Maybe the people that do know will remind you. We used to have a clothing line, and it was on MTV and Red Bull and Nintendo commercials, Nintendo commercials and stuff. Yeah, we had a good number of things, uh, but, a bunch of different fashion weeks. and Oh, yeah. Uh, we had fashion shows in like Florida and stuff that we were able to fly out to because it was yeah. wearable art. Miami, and then we did... Oh, and then sponsored a thing for uh, the Absolute Party at Sundance Film Festival and... We had stuff, uh, and we did some designs for the the one like zombie apocalypse type movie where you did all the patches. Oh yeah, the um, the Patrick guy from Boondock Saints. Yeah. that's not the actor that plays uh, Daryl in Walking Dead. I'm forgetting his name, but um, we had done patches and T-shirts for part of the. A lot of it was, since it was like sci-fi and spaceships and stuff, they had like uh, shoulder patches that mm-hmm. were all part of this one crew. And um, that particular actor was wearing that. But the the point being, though, we used to do T-shirts at a lot of these fairs with our art. And you would always have people being like, oh, you know, if it was, you know, it... Most shirts are on black because black shirts are the most popular Mm -hmm. and dark colors look good on pretty much everybody. So that's that. But people would be like, oh, I would get that. But, um, you know, or if that was a red shirt, I would get that where it's like, well, we're not, um, you know, a company with a bunch of financial backing. It just it was just us, you know, doing that in our spare time. And then, I mean, we see this now where people will hear all the time, oh, you should do, uh, you know, like a design from whatever. And then you finally do it. And then like it just sits around and Mm -hmm. it's like, well, you just wanted to justify like something. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's why like we stopped taking like. Unless it's like a commission based thing, usually, you know, it doesn't get done. Like, you know, I could take it into, okay, well, cool, we'll put it on the list. But like, if there's no real value to it, it's just not going to get done because, you know, it, you're just putting out, if it's something popular, you're going to put it out into a world where ev- now everyone has that. But you're, com- right. you know, but if Hot Topic has it, why would we need to do it? You know, because right. that's going to be the place everyone's going to go get it, you know? So it's those saturation. Yeah. Like we can't keep up with that. Like you said, but like, that's why we did like limited shirts and things like that. So like, if you had it, you, you were the only person that had it. So we kind of played towards, you know, that aspect, which people liked them. And that's why we had some local stores have them for those purposes. Cause they were different from like anyone else's just single colored screen print. We had like, you know, bleach out so we had like different like multi stencil looking prints and things like that that like none of your friends are going to have that if you go buy the one off you know if your friend wants it they're not going to be able to get it because you have the one um but it you know you you can't please everyone but yeah it would be the thing of oh i'd like that or you know if you guys had an extra large it's like well we sold all the extra larges you know and it's like we, we can't just, we're not like print on demand. We're like now everything's print on demand. Right. Unless you're known for being like a big print shop, you know? So, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it was a learning, it was fun while we did it, but it's not where we wanted our art to go. You know, it was cool. Cause we were able to just take that style of designs. Now we put them on the records, you know, we were able to translate that digitally into like stickers and, oh, yeah. you know, other things along the way that, just seem more more feasible to do um we put some into prints where we actually screen print on paper so then people were hanging those as prints in their house so it it went from okay well now we have to buy all these expensive t-shirts and have to sell them at a higher price to make either even or some sort of money on them 
you can just buy a pack of, you know, nice paper and screen print all over them. And now you have 50 prints, you know, and you can keep the, the pricing low and get it out to 50 people as opposed to like 10 people on t-shirts. So, you know, and a thought occurred to me too, we were telling someone yesterday about how when we decided we were done with the t-shirts and then I was also done with just having like the last maybe 50 hanging up in a random basement somewhere we're like hey let's just blow them out it'll be fun we'll just do it for a dollar I'm not trying to have you know a couple hundred dollars in singles but let's just do it for fun and uh, our dude Will shout out to Will what's up Will you'll see him soon Yeah, we got something special for that one he uh he came out and he he was amazed because people were still complaining about one dollar t shirts and these t shirts still cost us in twenty ten or whatever. I think it was still three fifty, four fifty, five fifty a t shirt. We weren't buying qu- big quantities. We'd yeah. buy like twenty five or whatever the minimum. Yeah, and then you'd you know, overall, you tack in the cost of the screen printing to build the kit. Oh, burn the screen. Like burn the screen. So, like, by the end, overall, per design, you'd be in the whole, like, easy 20 bucks plus overall. Like, because if you could stretch the emulsion. But, like, you're, like, $35 in if you're on doing a design. A, on a design before you could even touch the T-shirts and their cost. And then if you wanted to do different colors, now you're paying for the paints. Like, it's it's something that, like, easy people can just say oh why don't you just make it in this it's like but like if the screen print or the screen itself doesn't print or or, uh, burn correctly now you're buying more emulsion you know so like yeah and then you know it's it's a or or what you have to eat eat it away to then redo it like oh yeah there's a motion remover yeah the remover so there's a lot of different things and then now you're playing with time because things have to be fully dry and we were building our own uh, frames oh yeah there's a lot of stuff that went into it that like now it's like two days later before you can even try to screen print again, you know, and like, it doesn't matter because that's the whole care of demand. If people want it, they want it. They don't care the in-between. They right. just want the thing, but they don't see and that. Like, that's with the toys too. At least like you can tease a little bit, but you can give yourself space. You right. know, we're like, now we know that it's a learning, you know, it's a learning thing process that like, okay, well now I know I can have one toy and test, you know, someone where it's like, oh, hey, I'm going to put this little three inch out there. Show a picture of it. And watch the feedback happen. If I get enough feedback, okay, cool. Then I'll make a run of it. Right. Or it's just going to be a one-off. Or it's cool. It looks like that. But I'll just do six one-off colors. You know, and right. I got a rainbow and that's it. You know, and you're done with it. Where the t-shirts, if you wear it, if somebody sees that they want it, you know, that's cool. But then, like, we don't we don't have a store. We would pop up, just like you said, right. like at our events. So then, oh, well, we got to wait till next month, you know, because that's when we'll be at. You know, so... Um, there's a little play, but you know, it's, it, it's a learning process. It's a good thing. If you want to just make your own shirts, there's plenty of things online. You can go do that, teach yourself and go for it. Cause yeah. that's kind of what we did. We just Lots jumped of into options. it. You know, we just jumped into it, you know, go to Michael's, pick up a couple t-shirts, see what happens. You know, if you want to tie dye stuff, we did that too. We did our own like tie dye tie dye before you know, it was a thing. Yep. Like we, we, when the, in that lapse, we made our own colors and made our own designs and things like that. And now, you know, of course, after we do it, we did tie dye in 2005. Yeah. So then, you know, and then it's like, oh, now everyone's getting back into it, getting, you know, Wu Tang on a tie dye shirt screen printed. And it's like nobody would ever thought of that back in the day. But that's the stuff we were doing in like Cleveland Fashion Week and such. So, you know, like we said, if you're going to do it, go out and do it. But there's a lot of stuff to, you know, that are behind the scenes that like, you know, if you go to support an artist, just know that like, not everyone has an easy process of getting that thing to you. Like right. well, more than more than not, that person has gone through hell to either get that thing perfectly painted or if they're a resin caster, there's a process if they don't get a, a nice resin pull off the first time, you know, to, the cleanup sometimes is unbearable to get you this nice, you know, pristine piece. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, if you're going to go out and, you know, support people, just know that, hey, You know, that price might be a certain price for a certain reason. It's not just like the machine factory putting them out. Well, and, you know, a lot of people 
with arts being artsy, there's a lot of people that have it easy. They're privileged to the point that they're not struggling to get through their day to day. And they get to just do art. That's just their thing, which I'm not hating on them. But I would say like your average artist is either holding down another job or they're dealing with some other struggles that, you know, deteriorate like their amount of time and their like general being to uh, express themselves. Where there's so many times where I'm like, how does that person like their art's cool, but where I'm like, how do they own a house? in this particular neighborhood and then you find out like oh they're from they're from the rich suburbs where it's like oh so someone hooked them up they don't have to worry about their day to day because they're like do these people seriously like retire at 25 and you know the vast majority of people doing art are just average people doing average jobs for their to pay their bills Mm -hmm. and you know, obviously everyone wants to be a full-time artist or a full-time musician, but, you know, for a lot of people, the path to that takes a lot longer. Right. And so, you know, each, each artist has their own personal struggle to get wherever they're ultimately going to reach. We've right. seen a lot of people did it, especially in the designer toy scene that have, our, you know, that star burned bright for a second and then they realize it's a lot more work than they thought and they were nice at first then they got some followers and got cocky and then now don't know what happened to them which yeah you know also you know people's interests change right and then people's uh situations change so some people just revert to what's going to make them the most money. So instead of doing art, maybe they got into like real estate or maybe they're like hot dog vendor outside the stadium that that could provide them more consistent side hustle money. Right. But you're not, you're, you can only be so expressive decorating a hot dog. So you know that uh, <laughs> yeah. creative itch is still there. But so, well, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, tends to be like you know a good common denominator so that's why when you go to cons usually that's a you know a thing you can already have a baseline with other artists you know and you know that's just a a kind of thing that should like tie people together and once you actually start finding those people usually you know you you you, uh it's easy to collaborate with and other things like that so like just those like normal things outside of just art you know allow you to relate and then Oh, well, we have this in common, too. We have this in common, too. Oh, right. hey. And then, you know, you can figure out mesh of styles or, you know, there is something that you can have between the two of you. Oh, you um, like decorating hot dogs? I like decorating <laughs> hot dogs. Yeah. You know, so, like, that's, I mean, it's, it comes with the territory, you know. So, that's, like, why we kind of wanted to start doing this. Because, like, a lot of times you don't get the artist perspective, you know, like. I recently had somebody tell me like, Hey, I'm glad that you started doing your behind the scenes, you know, because I would just show my finished product, but that was just, you know, however timing or whatever. So I didn't really start filming things until I got the feedback. I was like, Oh, people want to see this or, Oh, Hey, they, they want to see the the step. Like they want the toy, but they like seeing the process of, Oh, that's how he made it. Or, Oh, that's, that's a cool idea behind the thing or seeing the original rough sketch and then see the sketch turn into the toy you know, even just a quick time lapse of that, like, um, you know, for somebody that's not making it, but is a collector. Now they have something to kind of also relate to. So, um, that's why we were like, we're not only bringing on just like toy designers, things like that. There's other creative outlets or just other people not even being creative that do other stuff that, you know, we just want to kind of give exposure to and, have interesting yeah. things to say and yeah. share. Yeah, because everyone, you know, everyone has a different path to whatever they're doing. But like, if somebody's, you know, just wanted to own a little coffee shop, but it's like, a, you know, just what they wanted, they may have something to bring, you know, to you guys watching that'll say like, oh, hey, you know what? That thing they said, I can relate to that. And you know what? Maybe they grinded to get there. That's a cool story. 
maybe they had an easy path. That's a cool story. But usually like it's, you know, it's, it's inside their, their drive and, you know, their mindset behind it, which is, you know, the kind of stuff that, you know, we're trying to bring so that, you know, there's different outcomes and different mindsets that like, Hey, you know what? I, I would never thought of that. Or, you know, maybe it's somebody you thought you maybe not relate to, but by the time they're done talking, you'd be like, Oh, Hey, you know what? Maybe I will follow them. Cause it's just something that like, as a person, they're awesome. And then what they do is awesome because they're an awesome person. Um, you know, and that's, you know, sometimes a lot of that gets cut out, you know, with, you know, five, five second videos and things like that, that, oh, you know, yeah. are just trying to keep people at, and you know, entertained but like that's only five seconds you have with that person's time you have to then make 20 other five second videos you know to keep them engaged all day you know and we're just trying to bring a little bit more more content behind uh that five second video well and like i've said to a lot of people too like a lot of these conversations we just have all the time and i was like you know i think in general, this information would at least be interesting, if not valuable to some people. Right. So that's why I was like, you know, we should do this. And then after a year of planning, we started doing this. And then, you know, we refine it as we go. Yeah. It's all a learning process, just like sc- learning to screen print, just like doing a T-shirt business. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had those, you know jump into something and then like, okay, well this went sort of thing. Okay. Well, where do you want to go now? Or how can we progress on this? And you know, this is where we, we got to. So like now we're like, okay, what camera angle with this, what content can we bring? So, you know, as you know, hopefully as everything goes, you guys are getting more engaged and like you have the area to comment down there, please comment. Um, you know, follow us on our social medias. If you have, you know, engagement of like, Oh, Hey, you know what? I went to this event and there's this artist there that does this. Yeah, let us know that you can hit us up because it may be somebody that we bring on here and then you get this actually get to see more behind that person, Um, you know, something like that. So, like, please, you know, engage with us, you know, like follow and like, because, you know, if we don't get feedback, we're going to do what we think is awesome, which, you know, that's kind of what we do anyways. We just hope that what we do, you know, somebody can relate to and yeah, like gets out to people. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, I go by and I'm like, hey, oh, you know, I like that character or whatever but like that's the face value part which is cool but like come over here i'll tell you about the character right you know and then that's like like with with our guest that we're gonna have on today which is our feature like this is someone who's like not only is an awesome person but it's what's behind their art uh what they put into it like in their personal life and then also just like how hyped they are behind oh, like yeah pretty much everything he does like everything he gets into it's like 90 level even if behind the scenes he's not feeling that way he's not going to show you that on certain things because it's how how much heart behind his actual projects and his designs he has he's going to hit you with hey i want to show you why you should be pumped about this and how you can relate to it and then you know hopefully you'll find a reason to get this thing in your life and then if you as a creative person, he will also motivate you always have like helpful suggestions on how you could do things better. Not even not in like a critical way, but in a way that like he'll get you excited about yourself. And well, that's like incredibly rare to have someone that's just so supportive of other people like there's there's a lot of people that don't care about the community and just see everyone else as stepping stones like if they don't if there isn't something that they can use you for or that you aren't some benefit to them they don't really care about you and then this guy's the opposite this dude wants he's one of those people that he wants the best for you he doesn't care if it benefits him or not Like he genuinely just wants the best for everyone and it's inspirational. And we're just, we're fortunate that not only is he someone we've collaborated with going to collaborate with in the future, but he's someone that we consider a friend and a brother. So, so this is our first official guest and it's probably going to be over multiple parts. So you don't have to sit it, watch it in one sitting, but this is a playful gorilla 
This is Alex. This is one of our friends. He's a super creative person, super positive, and we're going to bring him in for you guys now. Here we go. So everyone, this is uh, Playful Gorilla. We uh, are uh, super pumped to have him here. And um, yeah, Tay, tell us, uh, tell us where you're from. Tell us who you are. Get this started. All right, what's up, everybody? Yo, first of all, thank you, thank you. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be-